Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day today. I want to rant just a little bit, so please bear with me. One of the reasons you see this desktop in this video is because it's Linux. It's open source. It's private. It gives me the freedom that I want. Free is in freedom. I don't emphasize free is in free as much as I should, but free is in freedom. I'm not being tracked when I open up my web browser. I use an email client that doesn't track me. I use open source tools that make my job easier. It keeps me away from the Googles of the world. It keeps me away from Microsoft and Apple and all those people that all they want to do is just intake my data and advertise and just put a bunch of crap in front of me that really, at the end of the day, just hampers what I'm trying to do on my hardware. Now that I've gotten through that, those of you out there that watch my channel know that probably 90% of everything that I do is Linux based. But every now and then I do do a video like over here, Microsoft continues to attack open source and that pretty much goes over all the money they've put into open AI and Copilot that's stealing code from GitHub. And it is. I don't care what anybody comes in my comments and says. If they scrape GitHub and take your code and put it into their learning and then regurgitate that code without the proper licenses or attribution, it's theft. I don't care if the code was free or proprietary. Either way, it's theft. But that is a good video. If you haven't seen it, please take a look at it. And then about two weeks ago, I did hands-on with chat GPT. And this is what's regurgitating all the stuff that it's got. It's AI learning. It's taking in everything it can. You go in and you can ask it to write code. You can ask it questions. You can ask it to do math. But sometimes you're getting fictitious answers because it hasn't quite got all the information that it needs ingested for it to give you the right answers. So that's chat GPT. But having said that, I'm on open source. I love it. Like I said... I have freedom. I can customize this any way that I want to. Change my wallpapers, change everything down here. I can change the size of my dang uh, taskbar if I want to. I can make it bigger, make it smaller. I can pretty much do anything that I need to do on here. And I've got privacy. Well, at least I thought I had privacy. Now we've got people that are writing extensions. We're starting out with GNOME. I'm sure there'll be a KDE one here shortly that will integrate chat GPT into your Linux desktop. Please, somebody tell me why in the hell you would want to do this. If one of the reasons you want to embrace Linux is to have freedom and of course have your privacy, why in the world would you take something that's pretty much proprietary and inject it into your Linux system? I can understand proprietary drivers for NVIDIA, or I can understand proprietary drivers for any graphics card. I understand that. But why would you integrate ChatGPT into your Linux desktop? All it takes is somebody twisting the code just a little bit to take all the information that you're inputting on your system every day. Please, somebody, tell me how this makes sense. If you disagree with me, put it in the comments below. But it goes down here and tells you just what a great thing it is to integrate chat GPT into your GNOME desktop, whatever you want to call it. I hate it. I hate it. That would be like, let's just go ahead and make an extension so we can have Bing right up here so we can use Microsoft Bing right on our GNOME desktop. Wouldn't that be great? Well, isn't that great? Or maybe even get their, their coupon part of their browser and integrate it into my GNOME extension so that way when I do a search, they can pop up a little thing and say, hey, Microsoft's got a coupon for that. I don't think chat GPT has any place belonging on a Linux desktop. I don't believe it has any place existing on Linux at all. But let me back up a little bit. I'm sure this extension has been written and it's made by somebody that is an open source developer. I understand that. I don't want to crap on your work, but why? There are so many other things that we could be doing here. There are so many different things that we could do with developing applications or extensions for Linux, why in the world would you bring in something garbage like ChatGPT and integrate it? We could be doing something great like, oh my God, now they want to integrate ChatGPT with GIMP. So you could just talk to GIMP and tell GIMP what you needed done. 
Right here, GIMP listens to the microphone and requests AI to do changes until the picture is completed. Guys, how lazy do we gotta get? How lazy do we gotta get that we don't even wanna do work in an open source photo editing tool? Are we getting to that point in this world where we just wanna sit our fat asses on a couch and have a microphone in front of us and go, hey, could you make me something to eat? Uh, Hey, could you take a picture and could you do this? I mean, come on guys. I, 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 we don't need ChatGPT integrated into GIMP. I, I don't understand this. And I promise you, if you guys disagree with me, please let me know in the comments below. And if you agree with me, please, twice, put it in the comments below. I, I don't know where you all are from in this world. I don't. There used to be a time back in the day when they had Reese's peanut butter cups and they would, you know, they had these commercials that you got your chocolate in my peanut butter or you got your peanut butter in my chocolate. You know what? Keep your chat GPT out my Linux, out my open source apps. Now, if you want to make a version of GIMP for Windows or, or, or Mac and you want to include chat GPT, just go ahead and knock yourself out. But we're stepping on a slippery slope here, guys. Chat GPT integration into Linux, I don't think is a good thing. I think it is dangerous. And I think if you're somebody that's really worried about your security, you know, not have everybody looking in on what you do on your system, because there's no telling once you install an extension, what it's actually doing in the background, unless it is true open source code and you can check it. But I promise you, eventually, Chat GPT will find a way to get your information off your Linux machine. I promise you. There's no reason. That's what its job is to do, is to learn, 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 and take on all the data you can. So what do you all think about this? Chat GPT integration into your desktop and chat GPT integration into a GIMP app. Please give me your input. Let me know in the comments below what you truly think about it. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like the channel. Likes keep me in YouTube's algorithm, which means if you found the information in this video helpful, somebody else out there might as well. And subscribe. Doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. You also can become a member right here on YouTube for just 99 cents a month. But that's not all. We are also on Nutrion, which you can become a member on at $2.99 a month, or Odyssey, which is $4 a month. You can also buy us a cup of coffee, maybe zip on over to PayPal and throw us a donation, or go over to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.